went to the pantomime, I used to do all the acts when I got home. I think from that point on I knew that really what I wanted to be was an actress. Alison was a woman who I met in 1982. She was an actress I an actor. We met at a theatre company. We got married, had a baby, um, uh, divorced each other, stayed friends. Um, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Everything apart from thinking was hard for her. The clomazepam. It says to take it down from 15 mils to 10 mils a day. But I, I don't know, because my arm is still... And it doesn't... Sit, it sit, and the baclofen. He, he says to bring that up from five mils to ten mils and twice a day. But I don't know, because I'm still getting my nausea and my, my leg. And I've, oh, I've had enough of this. <laughs> I've had enough of this. In the spring of 2010, she told me she didn't want to see another winter. Until 1961, until the 3rd of August in 1961, uh, suicide, in England and Wales at least, was illegal. Try it and fail, and you could be put in prison. People were, which obviously helped. When she had decided to go to Dignitas, when she had asked for, for me to go with her, and she had found that the, um, the barriers, the bureaucratic and legal barriers that were in the way, put a fire in her belly that I had not seen for some years, and that was... That sort of carried her through. She liked a place tidy. <laughs> Switzerland is tidy. They dust the motorways. The idea of doing a play about this first occurred to me on the morning of Alison's death, actually, and I was immediately repulsed um, with myself for thinking such a thing. I don't want to die, but I don't want to live not like this. The impulse to make it into a piece of theatre is strange. Um, the impulse to write it beautifully and to make it into a piece of poetry I find less strange and that seems to help me in terms of a personal catharsis. Baclofen, Valium, creams and ointments, details of the Swiss appointments, rubber gloves and a bag of makeup and an oatmeal bar in case I wake up. She would say to her actors, you don't need anything, you don't need props, you need an empty stage and a chair and a heart full of a story. That's what you need. And so it's something of full circle that I find myself through circumstances being impelled to tell this story of what happened to Alison and what happened to me and Alison. Petra stands and from a cupboard takes a small brown bottle and a beaker and places them on a tray. You don't have to look. Can't help looking. So, Mrs Lee, you are ready. When I started writing this play, it was from a position, I think, of personal catharsis. The more I wrote, the more I rehearsed it, the angrier I got on Alison's behalf. When Alison and I went to Dignitas, it was a practical matter. We had to get this stuff sorted out. Alison wanted to do this. Her life was, for her, and that's a key point, intolerable. I'll have to be quiet now. I can't talk for a minute, love. My stance is very clear from the play, apparently. I thought I was being very balanced, but um, as uh, Alison would have said, oh, don't bloody bother with being balanced. <laughs>